pense pour Dieu. People think that I love to preach. Les gens pensent que j'aime prêcher. Yes, I do. Oui, j'aime prêcher. But I prefer Mais je préfère qu'on me laisse seul my, my avec Dieu. Joy, my joy. Ma plus grande joie, ma plus grande joie, c'est d'être seul avec Dieu. Brother Zach considered prayer to be the most important work that can be done on earth for God and for man. He believed very strongly that what has not been done in prayer has not been done at all. He was a man of faith who believed that God answered his prayers and he prayed. He had over 50,000 recorded answers to written prayer topics and he carried out over 100 prayer walks of between 5 and 47 kilometers in towns and cities around the world. He taught very intensely and deeply on prayer from the scriptures, from the lives and teachings of men who have walked God and from his own life. He also wrote many books on prayer. He strove more and more to know God and to move him to answer prayer. He begged for prayers. He would easily switch off from conversation to prayer. He valued prayer and most times when traveling in a car, he and those in the car would pray for some needs of the work. He made prayer topics available to enable anyone who would pray for him for five minutes or more to pray. He also got prayer chains, prayer rooms, and prayer houses started where more praying in an ever-increasing way was raised to God. When you see a non-praying leader, you lead a non-praying church. Quand on voit un dirigeant qui ne prie pas, il va diriger une église qui ne prie pas. Like leader, like church. Tel dirigeant, telle église. Whatever excuses you give now. Quelles que soient les excuses que tu peux être en train de donner maintenant. For your superficial praying. Pour, ta, pour justifier ta prière superficielle, ta manière superficielle de prier. One thing I want to tell you. Une chose que je voudrais te dire. You may accomplish 0.1% of what God intended you to accomplish c'est que tu pourrais accomplir 0,1% de ce que Dieu voulait que tu accomplisses. Before Jesus Christ prayed the Holy Spirit to come upon him. Avant que Jésus-Christ ne prie pour que le Saint-Esprit vienne sur lui, until he has torn heaven by prayer, jusqu'à jusqu ce qu'il ait, qu ait déchiré les cieux par la prière, and torn hell by fasting, et déchirer l'enfer par le jeûne. He did not preach one sermon. Il n'avait pas prêché un seul sermon. He knew he had to deal with God. Il savait qu'il fallait qu'il traite avec Dieu. And deal with the enemy. Et qu'il traite avec l'ennemi. Before he would deal with man. Avant de traiter avec l'homme. Oh, may God give us men of God. Oh, puisse Dieu nous donner des hommes de Dieu. Women of God. Des femmes de Dieu. Instead of men of men. Au lieu des hommes, des hommes. And women of men. Et des femmes, des hommes. On the 12th of May, 1975, he had his first prayer night with two people, a day after landing in Yaoundé from Uganda. And the first all night prayer meeting. Uh, während das erste uh, Gebetsnacht, wir, wir waren drei Leute. So Priska, myself, and one uh, uh, Schwester Priska, meine Frau, um, um, ich selbst und eine dritte Person. And that day, und seit diesem Tag, there never been one any weekend, there's no one all night in the week. 
seit dieser Zeit, es hat nie eine Nacht gegeben, wo es keine Gebetsnacht gibt. Not all nights, every night. Jeden, jede Nacht gibt es Gebetsnacht. Prayer was always central in his life. And prayer nights and seasons of prayer characterize his life. With his team, they carried out over 57 prayer crusades. A prayer crusade is an extensive period of seven to 40 days and nights, during which at least eight hours at a stretch are spent praying each day. They also carried out over 80 prayer sieges. A prayer siege is a time of near non-stop praying that ranges from 24 to 120 hours. In 2006, when the movement had already penetrated the 50th nation, the Lord told Brother Zach that the quantity and the quality of prayer for the work must be proportional to the growth and expansion of the work. At the command of the Lord, Brother Zach began leading the brethren to pray every night at the base in Etugebe, Yaoundé, from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. and later from midnight to 6 a.m. He called these nights of prayer World Conquest Prayer Nights, drawing inspiration from Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13. The fire on the altar must be kept burning continuously. It must not go out. He exhorted and charged his praying team to ensure that prayer be raised to God every night at the base of the work to sustain the growing work worldwide. He said that the spiritual measure of a man is not his life of prayer. And he said that Si quelqu'un a reçu quelque chose à faire pour le Seigneur et il ne prie pas, c'est que ce n'est pas, il n'a rien, c'est que ça ne peut pas être une œuvre de Dieu. Puis une œuvre de Dieu est faite à partir de la prière et développée dans la prière et grandit dans la prière. The World Conquest Prayer Nights have continued faithfully every night in Kume, the new headquarters of the ministry, until this day. Brother Zach also considered fasting as one of the major weapons for Christian spiritual warfare. He carried out over 250 fasts, ranging from 3 to 40 days, drinking water and taking water-soluble vitamins during his long fasts. Brother Zach saw the importance of redeeming money and investing it into reaching those without Christ with a glorious gospel. He therefore chose a lifestyle of simplicity and self-imposed poverty. We have a house that we built in the past. We have put it on sale and we will give the proceeds 100% of us. We have sold our house and sold our house and sold our house. There was a time we sold the uh, we sold the carpet. Carpeting, we learned the carpet a bit down. We had a deep freezer and a fridge. The fridge was new. My wife sold it. A fridge we learned that the pudu fridge, deep freezer, the pool color la cooler panat thela padga kare. That is with the under ko kore thito. I came from Germany. Somebody gave her a good briefcase. She sold it. Nalla briefcase thendi. That is with the under ko kore thito. Last time when I was here, brother bought me some good clothes. Pona dadava na yinda podi yena ke pastor nalla suit vai gurtar. Maybe he's asking why I'm not wearing them. And the suit I am, I were pona lene pastor nena chiki trupar. Brother, I sold them and I put them into the gospel. Na anda suit I gurtu boy bitti, adi boy kani gila pote ta. Padan teri di yena ke. I really did not know. Listen. Listen, brethren. Nalla gawni, nalla gawni. The perishing souls of men, the perishing souls of men. So, and the and the atma arke the alinji poor atma, adha pati mona ke kavana irunda adha seiva. I want to thank you a a million times for honouring me and giving me good things. Yena ke nalla ka porul kalaan, ninge kudte na honour pandra the kaga, mungulak million time nandi sorra. 
ஆனா அது ஆண்டவருக்கு உரியது நீ உனக்கு உள்ள சொத்து பொருள் எல்லாம் வித்து இயேசு இல்லாம இருக்கிறானே அவனுக்கு சுவிசேஷத்தை சொல்லு சுவிசேஷம் இல்லாதவனுக்கு சுவிசேஷம் சொல்லு உன்கிட்ட இருக்கிற காசு எல்லாம் செலவழிச்சு such as salaries allowances royalties and cash gifts into the gospel this was in the hope that as they grew in the knowledge and the love of the lord and the perishing souls of men they would one day invest 99% of their income into the gospel for brother zack the investment of the man's all is a testimony of a man's love for the Lord Jesus and for those whom he died for and the only means to conquer the world for Christ and have eternal reward in heaven Christ. in 1977 brother Zach went on a retreat at Mount Phoebe in Yaoundé Cameroon to seek a fresh encounter with the Lord it was there and then that the lord jesus appeared to him physically and called him to an apostleship beyond cameroon and he commissioned him to plant churches all over the world this is an extract from what the lord told him i call you to a world harvest ministry with the goal of reaching the whole world with the gospel of jesus christ and ensuring that 1 billion of them are saved and made into disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ obeying him in everything according to my word ask of me and i will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession you will rule them with an iron scepter you will dash them to pieces like pottery some 2 verses 8 and 9 this was how the vision of world conquest for christ came into existence and thus the ministry to which god called brother zack crossed the national boundary of cameroon to reach the rest of the world after this experience the lord continued to reveal himself to brother zack at different periods of his life and the vision of the conquest of the world for Christ grew and became clearer it is this vision worked out into accomplishable goals that defined his ministry and became the central burden of his life he worked tirelessly traveled extensively and labored extremely hard preaching teaching building up men to know and serve the lord healing the sick casting out demons from the oppressed and the possessed and breaking curses by the time of his home going he had undertaken over 500 missionary journeys that ranged from 2 days to 6 weeks from his base in yaounde to over 70 nations on all the six continents and sent out over 200 international missionaries into several nations on all the six continents and planted churches in over 60 nations it is this vision of world conquest for christ and this ministry which the lord called brother zack to that has become our vision and our ministry to Brother Zach was not only called by God as an apostle of the gospel he was also called by God to a distinct ministry of intercession he pioneered fasting and prayer movements and led in battles against principalities and powers obstructing the progress of the gospel and God's global purposes 
This was his unique contribution to the overall success of our goal and the accomplishment of God's total purpose for our generation. In 1987, a few years after the Lord had made the goal of our ministry clear to Brother Zach, the Lord now began to show him the principalities that would stand as obstacles to the accomplishment of the goal. These principalities and powers stood on the way of God's purposes being accomplished in our generation. God called Brother Zach distinctly to the overthrow of principalities and powers as a task that must be done for our goal to be accomplished. About the overthrow of the Prince of Communism who was holding two billion people captive then in 30 countries, Brother Zach wrote the following in his book, The Practice of Intercession. The first prince that the Lord called us to overthrow is the Prince of Communism. During my first 40 days fast, I was carried in the spirit for a tour of the world during which the Lord showed me the present power of the Prince of Communism and his plans for world conquest. He said to me, the secret behind the growth and expansion of communism is absolute commitment and utter sacrifice. If there are people who are prepared to commit themselves to me in an absolute way and sacrifice everything for me, to an extent that measures up at least to that of the communists. I will work with them and ensure that the prince of communism is overthrown. Later on, after much prayer and waiting on the Lord, we sent the following letter to our co-workers in the Lord. We have decided on the invitation of the Lord to fast for 21 days drinking water only from the 10th to the 30th of December 1987. We shall be asking God to make us into the type of people who can cooperate with him for the overthrow of the Prince of Communism. We shall also be asking that he should raise many others who, through absolute commitment to him and utter sacrifice for him, will be used to overthrow the Prince of Communism. I invite you personally to join us in this fast, Practice of Intercession, page 185. On the 17th day of the fast, the 26th of December, 1987, the Lord told Brother Zach that the fast had accomplished its purpose. The Prince of Communism had been overthrown and he and his fasting co-workers should stop the fast then. They rejoiced and praised the Lord, having deprived themselves of 51 meals. There were brethren from many countries who participated in this fast, and about 90% were from Cameroon. Again, on the 23rd of October, 1988, Brother Zach called for another 21 day fast to pray for the following. One, the opening of communist lands and the hearts of their peoples to the glorious gospel. Two, that hundreds of millions of Bibles and Christian books be poured into communist countries and pray that they be translated into Chinese and Russian languages and into all the languages spoken in communist countries. Three, that multitude of consecrated and sanctified apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers be sent into communist lands. Four, that apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers from among believers in communist lands be raised for the communist land. Five, that the church in non-communist lands would catch the flame and zeal of the churches in communist lands.
The fast started on the 5th of December 1988. 1,522 people from 23 countries participated in this seven fast. It was a difficult fast for him. On the last day of the fast, the 25th of December 1988, the Lord spoke to Brother Zach and said the following, Tell my children who have fasted that I have accepted their contribution to ensure that my exalted son had total victory in the communist world. I have accepted their fast. I exchange it for reward in my kingdom on that day, each one according to what it has cost him. You will continue to lay hold on what you have conquered, but it will be by prayer and literature to communist lands, but never again through long fasts. After he had received this encouraging message from the Lord, Brother Zach wrote in his book, The Practice of Intercession, what he had become assured of. Was the Prince of Communism overthrown? The question must linger in many hearts as to whether or not the Prince of Communism was overthrown. All we can say is that the God who called us to fast and pray for his overthrow told us that he had been overthrown this was on the 20th of December, 1987. We believe we heard God correctly, both about the fast and about the result of the fast. We, however, do not need to defend ourselves. If God did speak to us and we heard him correctly, then from the 20th of December, 1987 onward, there should be changes, far-reaching changes in communist lands, in their attitude toward, one, communism, two, the imprisonment of believers, three, the barrier to the entry of Bibles and other Christian literature, four, the refusal of the freedom of individuals, five, and so many other changes. If the Prince of Communism was indeed overthrown, and if the believers continue to stand in the gap, then millions of people in communist lands should turn to the Lord Jesus Christ in a few years at a phenomenal rate. Many communist leaders should move away.